Reducer fittings and bushings essentially accomplish the same thing, that is, reducing the size of your pipe, but they do so in different ways. After I show you how reducer fittings and bushings work, I'll share with you a good rule of thumb to go by to make sure you select the right fittings for your project. The key difference between reducer fittings and bushings is that a reducer fitting connects different sizes of pipes directly, while a bushing reduces the size of an existing fittings connection, essentially converting the fitting itself into a reducer. For reducer fittings, I tend to like to use them over bushings whenever possible, and they're a one-piece construction, which can save you a little bit of time. For example, reducing this one-inch pipe to a run three-quarter inch pipe. See, nice and streamlined. Bushings are a two-piece construction, as they're gonna require a separate fitting. This means I like to use them where space is tight, for example, at the end of an elbow fitting. If I had this sitting on the floor in a tight space, I might opt to use the bushing. The bushing will get glued into the elbow, and then the pipe goes into the bushing. Look how much less space that takes up than what a reducer coupling would take up. This is the exact scenario where a bushing really shines. Since we already have this elbow fitting here, we won't need any extra fittings to utilize the bushing. It saves us from measuring, cutting, and gluing this extra bit of pipe here while achieving the same result. It could even be necessary if we were in a particularly tight space, but finding a reducer elbow would be the ideal solution. It conserves space and minimizes potential leak points. The elbow with a reducing coupler has the most leak points, totaling four. The bushing presents three potential leak points, whereas the reducing elbow has the least, with only two. Additionally, this results in less solvent or sealant usage, along with less labor time required for installation. Now, if you already have a compatible fitting on hand, it can cost less to go with a bushing, but that has to be balanced out a little bit by the labor savings that you get out of just one piece construction. One thing reducer fittings can do that bushings can't is that a reducer fitting can have either a socket by socket connection, spigot by spigot connection, or a combination of the two. In irrigation terms, a socket is female and a spigot is male, whereas a bushing always has a male on one end and a female on the other end. Both reducer couplings and bushings have the ability to reduce not only slip connections, but also threaded connections. It can also adapt these connections. For example, a one inch slip over to a three quarter inch male pipe thread. Keep in mind, both reducer fittings and bushings must always reduce. Though it may be tempting, a bushing will not fit inside of PVC pipe. You must use a socket fitting. Here's my rule of thumb when choosing between reducer fittings and bushings. Use a reducer fitting when joining two different pipe sizes in a clean, direct run, especially for new permanent installs. Use a bushing when you're adapting an existing fitting, working in tight spaces, doing repairs, or repurposing fittings you already have on hand. A reducer coupling is the right choice if you need to reduce somewhere along a length of pipe where a fitting wouldn't already be found. You could use a bushing with a coupling, but a reducer coupling is simpler and quicker to install. If you're reducing multiple connections, especially in T's, elbows, or valves, using reducer fittings often saves time and labor, since they eliminate extra steps compared to installing a bushing separately. On the other hand, if you're working on small projects or need flexibility, bushings can be a cost-effective option to adapt fittings you already have on hand. If you have some one-inch T's lying around in the garage, why not put them to use? For frequent irrigation work, it's smart to keep a set of common size bushings stocked. They're inexpensive, versatile, and can save a trip to the store when you run into unexpected size mismatches. To sum it up, you should consider using a bushing in four key situations. First, when you have spare fittings lying around, a bushing lets you adapt sizes and make use of parts you already have. Second, for quick field repairs. If you need to adapt a size in the moment, bushings work with whatever fittings are on hand. Third, when you want to keep the outer size the same, like inside manifolds or tight assemblies. A bushing nests inside the fitting without adding bulk. And fourth, when no reducer fitting exists for your pipe size. Bushings can help with odd transitions or less common sizes. Here's when reducer fittings are the better option. First, when you don't have leftover fittings and want a clean purpose-built solution. Second, if you want maximum reliability with fewer joints and fewer failure points. Third, on big projects when labor and material savings add up and simplicity matters. And fourth, when appearance counts. Reducers offer a clean, professional look without stacking multiple parts together. If you found this video helpful, give us a like below. If you have any questions left, please don't hesitate to drop in a comment. I like to read and reply to every question we receive.